I recently joined a group of players who use Mahjong competition rules so that I can learn the scoring elements. I've decided that next month I will be adding solitaire and random pulls using Mahjong competition rules. So I want to give you an introduction to this rule set and give you some resources so that you can learn how to play too. I got my rules from the European Mahjong Association. Here's their website. You want to download the green book. In this book is a comprehensive list of basically how to set up the game, how to deal the tiles, and then all the different scoring elements with images of examples of the different scoring elements. So you can see here we have an index and then general rules. We have, these are all general rules. I just want to go through this so you can see the meat of this document. How to play is there. How to complete a hand. And then here's where the scoring starts. So they have a chart starting with the highest scoring element down to the lowest with a description. So you have the points, the font number, and then the font name, and then the description. And it's all uh, pretty intuitive. This is translated, so there may be a little bit lost in translation, but there is a section in here of images that can support the definitions. So if you scroll down further, this is where the visuals are. So you'll want to look at these to introduce yourself to the different scoring elements that have been adopted for MCR. I'm not going to do demonstrations for these because they've done a great job showing all the different permeations of any of these elements, including exceptions. So familiarize yourself with the scoring here. You can see it's quite lengthy and it's great study material. So have at it. I'm just going to scroll down. We're down to the one fawn flowers. Okay, and that's the end. So that is the rule book. I would download that and study in your free time if there is such a thing. I also want to show you that I uploaded sort of a summary of the differences between MCR and Cantonese style. Because if you learn Cantonese style with Hong Kong scoring, if you learn that to get familiar with Mahjong, if you're new to the, the game, then your learning curve to MCR is going to be short. So you can find this on under files on my Facebook group. You click on Mahjong competition rules, Cantonese style with Hong or international scoring. And then I've kind of highlighted what I feel are the differences between Cantonese style and MCR to hopefully shorten the learning curve. So I start by sharing, if you're new to Mahjong, learn the fundamentals of Cantonese style with Hong Kong scoring, which is called HKOS. Uh, that is the easiest version to learn and it's the foundation for all Asian versions. Once you learn Hong Kong style, you can easily learn any other Asian version, including Ricci and MCR. Now there are some complexities for both of those that will put you on a learning curve, but it will probably be shorter if you learn HKOS first. So uh, you could also practice at home if you have a set at home. I'll leave a link below the video to where you can buy a uh, set at a reasonable price. And then you could also play online at Mahjong Time. They have MCR included in their offering. So I also want you to see the different terms that are different from Cantonese style to MCR. I'm sure that if you use the regular Cantonese 
or even Ricci terminology, you might be okay. For example, Han versus Fawn for the points. Um, Quan versus Han Chen, you know, maybe. Although I think for rounds, there are four rounds uh, for MCR, whereas in Ricci, there are only two typically. So there are some of those differences there. And if you read those rules that I showed you a minute ago, you'll see. Um, these are just kind of the high level differences that I personally wanted to learn myself right off the bat. So you can see Chow is Chi, Peng is Peng, Kong is Gong. I'm thinking that's how you pronounce it. Flower is Hua, and then Mahjong is Hu. So those are the term differences. Everything else is kind of the same. As far as setting up the game, the difference is with breaking the wall. When the whoever is determined as being East, they will roll the dice. They'll count around the table players based on the number rolled, and then that player rolls the dice. Those two numbers are added together, and that is where the dealer breaks their wall. That is different than Hong Kong style or Cantonese style. Also, there is no flower wall. In some Asian versions, there's a flower wall, also known as a dead wall, ghost wall, uh, or Kong wall. Those are all um, pulled apart. They're basically 14 tiles set aside for where you take your flower replacements. For MCR, you just pick your replacements from the back of the wall. I assume that you're going to stack or tower the tiles so that everybody knows where the back of the wall is. And also, the discards are not discarded randomly, like in Cantonese or most Asian versions. Of course, um, with Ricci, you discard in rows of six. And that will be the same with MCR. And that will allow for more strategic decision-making and careful discarding. Because you'll be able to see exactly what everybody is discarding. So when you make a meld and exposure, you're going to be turning your tiles to identify who discarded those tiles. So those are a couple of the similarities between MCR and Ricci. For scoring, you must have at minimum eight points in your hand. So from what I understand, once you have those eight points, you win as quick as you can. This is a very fast paced game. Minimum points typically is what people are going to play. If you tend to try to play for stacked points or big hands, you may never win that night because a lot of players are gonna go for those eight point minimums. As soon as they hit that eight point minimum, they're gonna win. They're gonna try to win, win quick. Win quick, win small. Many small hands can take the night, basically is the idea, versus one or two big hands. It'd be a fun thing to test out, and I may just do that. So when it comes to counting, this is where some complexity is. So what I have highlighted here is what I feel are kind of the differences that can maybe shorten the learning curve a little bit. You count the primary font, which is going to be the highest scoring element in your hand. You do have a non-repeat principle that you'll need to familiarize yourself with, the non-separation principle, non-identical principle, high versus low points, and a count once principle. Those are five things that you will need to understand before you attempt to score your hand. Otherwise, you could have incorrect scoring. With the scoring, you have extra points. Non-winning players pay eight points right off the bat. The basic points is your total fawn. Penalty points are from fouls that are in the penalty section of the rule book. With the scoring, as you're looking at your hand and you're trying to figure out what your total score is going to be, take a tile from the wall. Any tile upturned or with the face showing is one point. Any tile with the back shown is worth 10 points. And that can help you track your scoring as you go through the elements to get your total points. After a full round, there are table points awarded. First place gets four, second place gets two, 
third place gets one, fourth place gets zero. So that could hopefully break a tie. For the penalties, these are kind of um, um, similar with Asian versions, wrong tile count, reaching for a pick, then changing uh, your mind. That's kind of a courtesy uh, thing. Also, you wanna make sure that you are decisive with your intentions. Uh, false call or uh, flower replacement issue, receive, revealing a tile from the wall before upper player discards. So basically picking ahead, you can't do that. You will get different penalties. So for infractions, you could have indecision um, that could bring a penalty, touching a tile before the player before you discards. Uh, if you make a, a claim for a discard after three seconds, you can get a penalty for that. I think it probably depends on how competitive the game is or if you're in a tournament, these may or may not apply uh, for friendly games. Uh, the infractions, after one warning, the first infraction, you forfeit five points. Second infraction, 10 points. Third infraction, 20 points, etc. It just escalates from there. For false mahjong, below minimum score, you pay 10 points to each player. If you are short tiles or you misread a discard, pay 20 points to each player. And then, of course, you have uh, erroneously ex exposed tiles. Let's see, tiles after valid mahjong declared win. Exposing tiles after valid mahjong declared. I have to figure these out myself. Expose tiles after invalid mahjong declared. Exposing tiles of another player. Yeah, oh, these are all kind of like chombos for Ricci. So basically don't expose your tiles unless you have a valid mahjong. I think that's kind of the bottom line. And don't touch anybody else's tiles. Don't spill tiles from walls, basically. So at the very bottom here, I do have a link to MCR rules. Those are kind of the highlights of differences between Hong Kong style or Cantonese style and MCR. Now, I have not played more than one time with a group and we started with just a selection of scoring elements so i am a beginner with mahjong competition rules so when i do solitaire and random pulls keep that in mind i am on a learning curve as well i will be playing mahjong competition rules at mahjong time beginning mid-september so if you are interested in this version check it out also I will have a link to this. This is what I pulled together to help me as I learn the game. This has all the scoring elements on it. You can see it's pretty big. On the back is the fundamentals of the finding your seat, dealing the tiles, the basic form, format and flow of the game, and then payment. So check that out, download that player reference. It's printed on, on legal size, double-sided. If you are interested, all the links will be below the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Be sure to click the bell. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or maybe pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next MCR video, may all your picks be keepers.